you can snag the link and then post it wherever you would like, okay? So here is our Facebook Live starting to stream right now. I'm just gonna trust that that's working. And you all are being quiet or my, my other helpers on here are doing a really good job with the mute function. <laughs> all right. And here's the recording. Well, welcome everyone officially to my favorite class of the year. It's an honor to be here teaching this together face to face. And this is the uh, essential oils of the Bible. And this is, this is a class that was kind of been, has been my baby since about uh, a year into my oil journey. And I got introduced to essential oils back in the summer of 2009. And I had two babies at the time. Now I have three kids. And uh, Connor was dealing with lots of digestive issues and so was I. And so after trying so many different things, my friend Betsy shared a little sample of what's called Digestin. It's a digestive blend. And I put a little drop on his tummy prayed over him, put him to bed, and he slept through the night for the first time in his life. He was nine months old at the time. My husband, he said, what is that snake oil you're rubbing on him? And, and is he even breathing in there? Because we were like, what? we've never experienced this child of ours sleeping longer than an hour. And so we, not everybody has like such a miraculous experience with oils the first time they use them. But for us, it was really an, an amazing answer to prayer. We had been um, on a journey, on a health journey for several years before that, of just starting to be really intentional about what we were putting in our bodies and on our bodies. And I'd gotten introduced to homeopathy and herbs. And I loved the, it, it resonated so much with me that our amazing creator gave us things in creation to help keep us healthy and to help us when we do get sick that we have something to turn to as a natural option. And so essential oils were like this perfect fit for our family that I didn't even know existed. And so when um, about the same time I got introduced to a book, my friend Betsy had actually gotten this from the library and it's this book that I have right over here called the healing oils of the bible she she checked it out from the library and so then I checked out a copy and I loved it so much I quickly ordered one online because I wanted to underline it and dog ear it and I just like ate this up and for me if you're if you know much about the strengths finders um I I have input is really high it's in one of my top five and so I love gathering information and researching it. And it's funny because I have a lot of my friends that know this about me say, Carrie, if you've researched it, like we're going to trust you did the legwork and we're just going to trust what you, all that research and time and energy you spent. So that is, that is what led me into, as I started gobbling up this information, I found it to be so fascinating. And I said, how did I get to be this old and never knew a lot of this information? And so that is how this class came to be birthed out of a lot of reading and using oils and sharing and teaching and learning and absorbing. And it is my great honor to get to share this yet again in this new special platform. And I'm so excited to have so many. We have um, 157 at the moment here with us. And, um, and so I just want to kick us off with a prayer of blessing over our time together, if that's all right. So Jesus, I just pray right now that you come and fill me with your words, help direct me and guide me with all the most important things to share in our limited time together. Thank you for these gifts of the earth that you've given us. And I pray for everyone that um, made a priority to be here in their schedule tonight, that you, can, that you can just anoint this time for every single person that's on here. Help bond us together, even though we are far, far apart. 
And I pray that we can learn from one another tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. So I, I am a, if you don't know me, I actually am I'm from Columbus, Ohio, and I'm coming to you live from my basement in a suburb of, of the city. And my husband is Gary. So we're Carrie and Gary, even though my first name is Karina, most people call me Carrie. And we have three kids that are now 14, 12, and nine. And uh, we are, we have, <laughs> Our story is so cool, really. I, I, I started, I told you, Gary was calling them snake oils. What are these snake oils that you're rubbing on Connor? And then within a few weeks, he had his own personal experience. He actually took oregano when he was feeling really crummy and it knocked out his funky crud feelings. And he got up from taking a long nap and he's like, I don't know what it was that you gave me, but I feel so much better. And and eventually the, the short version of the story is that my husband, who's an attorney, he quit his job after about four years, four or five years of watching me share this just in the nooks and crannies of my life and uh, kind of as my side, my side passion. And it's something that I felt so called to do that I was like, I don't even, it's not about making money to even like, it's cool that I'm getting to now pay for the the products that I'm using, but it's always felt like calling. And Gary saw that and he met so many of you and saw your experiences. And he said, I want to be part of this. So he quit his job many years earlier than he ever expected to. And he came and partnered with me and, and we do this together. And we're now Presidential Diamonds with doTERRA. That's the brand of essential oils that we use. And I know a lot of you on here use oils. And I know as I post this recording though, there's people out there that use oils from all sorts of companies. And, and so as we walk through this tonight, one of the things I'm gonna spend just like two little minutes on is we'll talk about what is an essential oil and how you use them and why, why we're using these. So let me go ahead and start the screen share if I can pull this open and hit play. Okay. Can everybody see that? Can I get some nodded heads that we're seeing the right slide? Okay. So, here we go. And by the way, if you didn't hear the announcements in the beginning as we were getting started, I would really encourage you, if you have some of these oils that you see on the screen, round them up from your house. Go ahead and just like walk around and gather some of them up because it's really nice as we talk and share about these oils that you can be using them. And then grab your Bible if you have one handy and grab a notebook and a pen. So, oh, here's, here's a picture I even included. So you can see all my, my cute family members in there. And here we are going to get started right in the beginning. And I told you I have a lot of resources over on my end. So forgive me when I am <laughs> like shuffling papers occasionally. So in the beginning, this is what I, I've got to just add. This is my first time I've got, I've been able to add this little footnote to this slide. We started homeschooling for the first time last year in the beginning of the year, before all the, the crazy hit. My oldest daughter had been asking to be homeschooled for years. And so we finally said, <laughs> maybe this is the Lord that's nudging her and trying to communicate with us. So we started homeschooling the beginning of last year, which was lo and behold, like never did we realize it was gonna be the best year ever to try homeschooling. And so we're continuing, this is our second year and the curriculum we're using, we're studying from creation to Greeks. That is what we're studying. So we've already gone through the whole book of Genesis together and we're in the middle of Exodus now. And it's so fascinating getting to read this with our kids as our history book too, right alongside other history books. And so we've been studying all of creation. And so this Genesis reference talks about on what the days of creation and specifically, I want to jump. It says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good and he separated light from the darkness. Okay, now I'm going to skip to verse 11. And God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so the land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed in it, according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And now I want to jump to the be beginning books of the New Testament. If you're familiar with the Bible, you know that the New Testament starts off with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the very beginning of John. If you've never read any of the Gospels, the, the book of the Gospel of John is a really great place to start. And this is how it starts off. And I want you to see the parallel. See if you notice the parallel here. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning and through him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that had been made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Isn't that beautiful? And I want, one of the things that I really want you to take, one of the special nuggets from these verses that I've shared here is how God spoke things into being. And, and if you put your hand, I want you to put, put your hand right now over your vocal cords and you're all muted. So it's okay if you talk, you'll feel the vibration that's happening. And as God spoke things into being, into creation, his vibration is in the things that he created. And so the plants that he created, the people, the animals, we all, any living thing that has, it has a vibration and it's God's living essence. I really truly believe that. And um, we don't have time in this class to go do a deep dive into all of the different frequencies and vibrations. But if that interests you, there is a lot of great content in this, um, this Healing Laws of the Bible book and the chemistry of essential oils. I mean, I'm telling you guys, I love studying this stuff. So, <laughs> and I also want to reference this beautiful verse. This is one worth writing down. Ezekiel 47, 12 says, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will, this is lean in, listen, their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. So God tells us over and over through his word that he's given us his plants for healing, for helping us, for nourishing us, right? Amen. <laughs> and again, I invite you to utilize that chat. If you have questions, if you need something repeated, if you say, oh, I missed that verse, what was that? Use, utilize each other to communicate there. And if you're on Facebook joining us live right now, same thing, feel free to, to comment. If, if nobody else can answer your question, I'll circle back after this and I can answer your questions. So at, at what we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of like do a deep dive into the scripture and talk about the first references of essential oils in the Bible. And then we're gonna talk about kind of some of the different weaving of, we're gonna weave through uh, and talk about essential oils as they were used in scriptures in different ways, different references. And then the second half of the class is going to be actually focusing on things like myrrh and frankincense and what they were, would have been used for in ancient times and what we can still use them for today, okay? So these pictures are what might uh, have been the experience for, you've heard of Joseph's well. And again, this is so cool because I've been spending weeks studying this with my children. And so the story is, if you're not very familiar with it, that Joseph was, he was lavished on but a lot of love he was he was the, at the time the youngest son of his father Jacob and he was a, you know adored by his father and the brothers started it started wearing on them and they started getting jealous of it and so they wanted to get rid of him so they threw him in this cistern 
and kind of thought they were going to leave him for dead. And then this, uh, this group of um, Ishmaelites came passing by on their way to Egypt and they decided to trade their brother and um, told, went back though and told their father that he had been uh, eaten by a pack of wolves and brought back that famous coat of many colors, the robe that had been made for him. And so his father thought he was dead. And so one of the references here is, is actually one of the things that they traded him for was myrrh. And I don't think I actually have it written, shame on me, I don't have it on this slide. So let me tell you, let me see if I can, again, quickly see if I can find this. So it's Genesis 37 verses 23 to 28, if you're taking notes. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe that he'd been wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. So they made the trade and in that day and age, myrrh and frankincense were more valuable. I mean, they traded with commodities more than money. That was like their version of money, often used way more than gold. The irony is that many years later when there was a famine in the land and it had been because Joseph had told, had he had translated Pharaoh's dream and then was elevated to a really high stance, second hand man to Pharaoh. Um, he, he helped prepare Egypt for this famine. And so here his brothers have to come many years later to get food and grain from Joseph himself. And they didn't realize it was him. They didn't recognize it, but they had brought down myrrh to trade um, says it, their father Jacob said to them, if it must be, then do this, put some of the best products of the land in your bags, take them down to the man as a gift, a little balm and a little honey, some spices and myrrh and some pistachio nuts and almonds. So that, that is the first reference in the Bible of this, uh, essential oils. Now, as we talk about the scriptures and the amount of references of essential oils, now it wasn't always essential oils that these, these references, sometimes it was a resin or an incense. And I'm gonna talk about that as we go right now, because I don't know about you, but for those of you that maybe have been now using essential oils for a number of years, or maybe even just a short time, you might have that experience like I did when I, when I was, when I was suddenly had myrrh and frankincense in my possession. I never knew what myrrh and frankincense was, but this time of the year here, we always set up that, you know, we set up the, the wise men and the nativity scene and, um, you know, gold, frankincense and myrrh. I didn't know what they were though, right? And so suddenly, as I started reading through scriptures again, after having these in my possession, it's so cool. It's just exactly what God <laughs> promises us is that the Bible is living and that all through the different seasons of our life, as we're reading and as we dig into the text, it's like the whatever we need in that season. You might read Psalm 23, every year of your life and take something different from it every season, right? And Psalm 23 is a perfect example. I never noticed the reference to oil in that Psalm, but now it's like highlighted for me. I can't miss it. And so I, I just wanna let you, all of you know, this is just some fun numbers. Some things to consider that uh, in, as the books of the Bible, there's actually, over 1,000 references to essential oils or the plants that produce them all through the Bible. There's 33 different species of oil or plants that produce them that are referenced in scripture. Uh, 46 out of the 66 books of the Bible mention essential oils or the aromatic plants from which they derive. And how many of you, when you remember reading the Bible, and maybe even last week when you might have been reading, when you came across the word oil, you immediately thought olive oil. 
that you, you know, because for me, so many of the references that I had seen, I was like, oh, they're talking about olive oil. Well, let's talk a little bit about oil, olive oil, because it, it really is a very special oil that was used all through ancient times. And, um, but there, only some of the references in the scriptures are mentioning, are referring to olive oil. And one of the things it was a staple during, in the Holy Lands. It was often used as a carrier oil. And I'm going to circle back to that little, little truth. And you'll remember that, kind of plug that one away at the moment. So, okay, like I promised, before we dive too much deeper, for anybody that's out here that's new, and maybe chime in on the chat. If this is your first ever essential oil related class to attend, I'd love to hear that from you too. So what is an essential oil? Basically, they're, they're aromatic compounds that are found in all different parts of the plant. So when we talk about myrrh and frankincense, that's actually found like deep within the tree. So you have to tap the tree or score the tree and scrape it off to get that. The lavender comes from the, the essential oil comes from the flowering buds. The peppermint, which is right here pictured on this screen, comes from the leaves. And so if you've ever taken a peppermint, plant in the leaves and you rub it between your hands, you've actually burst open hundreds of essential oil sacs. And that's why your hands smell like peppermint after you've done that. And so they're very, very potent, very powerful, um, more potent than dried herbs. And that's actually why I love the, the reference of peppermint because one drop of peppermint essential oil is equivalent to about 28 cups of peppermint tea, surprisingly. And then the three main ways to use them are aromatically, topically, and internally. And we're going to address all of these different, I'm gonna give suggestions and little bits of advice for all of these different ways. And by the way, if you're going to use the oils in any of these three ways, you need to make sure that they are pure, unadulterated, nothing added, nothing taken away. One of the reasons that I'm very partial to uh, doTERRA essential oils. I feel very blessed to have been introduced to them so many years ago, is that they are very passionate about sourcing their oils from wherever they grow indigenously around the world. And I've had the honor with several people that are on this in this class with us tonight to travel to different parts of the world. Um, this time last year, I was in Kenya with my daughter, Madeline, and Sheena, who's also in this class with us tonight. And um, we had the chance to meet the, the growers, the farmers, the harvesters, the distillers, and work side by side and see the beautiful process. And that doTERRA works direct with the farmers. And so the impact is so powerful. And um, I really invite you, if you've not yet gone to the doTERRA YouTube channel to watch their Behind the Bottle series, they're little like one minute clips that will show you some of the backstory behind the beautiful oils like frankincense and spikenard and some of the oils that we're going to be talking about tonight. So the, the first oil that I really want to get into with some of the scripture is as, as I was digging, digging in and doing so much of my research, I kept coming across this reference of the oil of joy and the oil of gladness. Does that sound familiar with some of you? In fact, Psalm, um, Psalm 23 uh, talks about anointing my head with oil, my cup overflows. Um, so there are references to this oil of joy and oil of gladness. And so before I read several of those different verses that I love, I just want to talk about our sense of smell and how God created us. And I'm going to get a little bit sciencey here. I hope that's okay. I do weave some of my favorite sciencey stuff into this particular class because I think it's so fascinating to understand the how and the why behind um, how they work. So God created our sense of smell different than all of our other five senses in the way that there's a direct link, a direct access right to the middle of our brain. This part of our brain that's very, very hard to have access to, to tap into at all. In fact, when I read my notes from my research that when we talk about the amygdala, 
and this is again i'm referencing the olfactory system and the limbic the limbic system the olfactory nerve okay so when you breathe in something in fact pick any one of your oils maybe if you have anyone that you happen to have handy i'm going to use cedar wood at the moment and um just going to breathe that in you're, this oil, the oil, the teeny tiny particulates that are flashing off, they're going straight through that olfactory nerve right into that middle of your brain, okay? And it's having an instantaneous impact. And that's actually, when people ask me the best way to use oils, I always say, hey, the fastest way to impact a mood and actually to get essential oils into your bloodstream is aromatically. So you can't go wrong just by putting oils on your hand and breathing it in or using a diffuser, okay? So, but that, that um, so what's so important about this amygdala and these, this parts of our brain that are get, that are, the oils are able to tap into. Do you know that we actually have an emotional response to the things that we smell before we have a rational response? And that this part of our brain is where we lock and store emotions and memories. And so for any of you that can trace back an instant, maybe recently where you had a smell memory, maybe you walked into a store or you smelled a candle that reminded you of a, a friend that had that in their house, or you were baking something and it reminded you of doing that same thing with your mom or your grandma or your child years ago, just that how it stirs up that immediate memory. So it's a really important way to be able to tap into our emotions. And what I love is that you can tell from these verses that God created this, this sense of smell on purpose to be able to tap into our emotions immediately. And then not only that, but all through scripture, he gives us, he gives us instructions for how and why to do this. And remember, the Bible is not like a physician's desk reference. There's not, there's not all sorts of um, things in here about why myrrh is really great for, you know, right after you've had a baby and why, why do you use frankincense? These, these oils and these plants were so common practice and commonly used in ancient time that they knew how to use it. So, but I love that God is giving us instructions and that he's saying to use the oil of joy and the oil of gladness. So, as a stand-in for what might have been this oil of joy and the oil of gladness, we have an oil called elevation. So if you happen to have elevation nearby, why don't you open that up? And I want you to put a drop of that in your hand. This, this screen shows all the different oils that are in this and several of those are oils that, are, that are, uh, were available during ancient times. We've also been studying all of this Egyptian history and it's so fascinating to see how they were really advanced with all of the balms and, and pr procedures that they used for, for medical purposes. So this is, is an oil that's really good at helping to elevate your mood and your focus. And so right here, Hebrews 1, 9, it says, you have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, your God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And I want to, I want to read to you one of my favorite references in the Bible of all. And I feel like for such a time like this, it's, uh, it's really important. I'm trying to see if I can pin my video. Um, I don't know if any of my co-hosts can like pop it so that sometimes my video is more of the dominant one when I'm reading things or talking, but you can play around with that if you want. <laughs> so this is Isaiah 61. I love this whole book of the Bible or this whole chapter. And this is a, this is a part where it talks about the year of the Lord's favor. And I want you just to be in a posture of receiving this, okay? The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, <laughs> and to release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes and the oil of joy instead of mourning, 
and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Well, maybe we should just wrap up the class right there. <laughs> um, that impacted me just now. I apparently needed that. But um, I just, again, over and over through, through passages, Proverbs 27, 9, perfume and incense bring joy to the heart and pleasantness of a friend springs up from their heartfelt felt advice. And then on the screen before, hopefully you wrote that one down, Psalm 45, verses seven and eight. I'll, I'll switch back to that. You love what is right and hate what is evil. So your God has placed you above your companions. He has filled you with joy by pouring the sacred oil on your head. Myrrh and aloes and cassia make all of your robes smell good. In palaces decorated with ivory, the music played on string in instruments makes you glad. And I love this reference because it not only talks about smell, but also music. And that's from my research, I've heard that the two things that can really help unlock emotions and memories are smell and music sometimes. So feel free to chime in on the chat and maybe you are, I cannot see it. I wish I could see the chat, but I want you to chime in if you've had some experiences or if that maybe just blessed you in some way, okay? Um, Oh, oh, I'm so glad I just looked over at this because I really, I really wanted to read this out loud. This is a special thing that I just came upon again when I was, when I was studying this book. And hopefully it's okay if I just read this because I think it's so special. She said, when you inhale the fragrance of essential oils, it's volatile organic compounds remain in the olfactory membranes of your nose, which is the lining of your nostrils. Here, the receptor neurons, which are nerve cells, take in the scent molecules and hold them and then send electrical impulses to your brain's olfactory bulb, the center of your sense of smell. This olfactory bulb then signals the area of your brain that contains emotional memories while it simultaneously reaches out to your limbic system, which controls, listen to this, it controls things like blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing. The limbic system also controls memory and hormone balance. So once the scent reaches it, many changes can immediately take place in your body. Fear, anger, depression, anxiety, happiness, and sadness are all regulated here. This is why aromatherapy can have such a powerful effect on the human body and the emotional state. So just the act of smelling, uh, an oil can, for some people, if it's, a, if it's one you don't like, it might make you angry or say, I'm not interested. <laughs> but if it's something that's bringing you peace or calm, um, you can have an imme immediate impact. Okay. Are you guys okay if I share some more science? <laughs> Again, I think this stuff is fascinating. And uh, uh, so have your, have your pens handy because I think this stuff is so good. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk, I'm going to kind of do a full circle moment here um, and talk about, first of all, our amazing cells and then God's amazing essential oils on a cellular level. And this is all stuff that I've gathered from a lot of different books and resources and chemistry books. I've suddenly become interested in um, organic chemistry again. <laughs> so for the sake of easy math, I'm also gonna round, give it, kind of do some round numbers. So our bodies have trillions and trillions of cells. So depending on who you are studying and researching, they're still trying to figure out a nice round number, but it's usually somewhere between 30 to 100 trillion is the estimate. So it probably has, to, there's some, I'm sure there's a lot of different variables that that is why the big span in numbers. But so with these trillions of cells, each of our body cells has, um, has six gigabytes of memory. And so if you think about all of the trillions of our cells in our body combined, and that every single one of those cells has about six gig of memory, that's a whole heck of a lot of memory. And what's so fascinating is when you learn that 
as we store memories, we don't always store them in our brain. We end up, our body like uses a card catalog and stores things all over our bodies in different places. And so as I've gone through my own healing journey and so many friends and their healing journey, it's been fascinating to see how even like unlocking um, past uh, memories and different things that can sometimes alleviate stomach issues or different kind of health issues, okay? So now listen, the in order for these cells to work well together, they actually have to communicate. And there's two different ways that they, they communicate the nervous system and the hormone system. Now with, with the nervous system, that's an electrical impulse. So it's just mm -hmm. like an immediate fast response. Like I love using the example, if you have your hand over a burner mm -hmm. and it's, or a candle, often you won't even notice that it's hot before you're pulling your, you're jerking your hand away before it's even registered to your brain. Like, oh, that was burning my hand. Okay. And that's your nervous system. In action. Somebody is unmuted. Okay. I've got my people on there doing their awesome help with me. Um, then the nerve, the hormone system is the other way that our cells communicate with each other. And that's actually using what we're going to call a mess messenger, like a courier. And the little courier, it's our, our brain sends out a message and says, oh, we've just been, um, you know, like we just finished eating dinner and now we need to help digest our food. So we need our cells over here to do a little bit more production of insulin, for example. So we need to send these messengers called the ligands down to the pancreas with a specific message to them. Guess what? They're not going to send that same message out to the whole body, right? We just need this message to go to the pancreas for that very specific message. And it's basically the, the ligands carry a key that can only be unlocked if it goes to the very particular cell it has a message for. And if you look at this screen, it shows kind of basically, it's trying to show a key from a ligand that's going down to travel to this particular site. Now let's say it gets to the pancreas with this message and it's trying to deliver it, but it gets there and suddenly the receptor site is blocked it cannot get the key in the keyhole, it cannot deliver the message. And so suddenly it kind of is going, oh shoot, we can't communicate effectively here. And I'm gonna, this is the very kind of elementary version that I needed to, to help me understand this. So that's what I'm explaining today. But basically how do our receptor sites of our cells, how do they become blocked? Well, there's all sorts of things. It's, it could be from, maybe a poor diet, maybe toxic air that we're breathing in, maybe bad water, maybe um, not enough sleep, maybe there's different waste in your body that it's trying to push out and it's just getting stuck or lodged. So there's a lot of different things that can cause receptor sites of our cells to get blocked. And then communication isn't happening, happening as well. And that's when, that's like the early onset stages of disease that can set into place okay or sickness okay now don't worry i'm gonna i promise i'm gonna be bringing good news so now let's talk about god's amazing essential oils when you all dripped one drop of whatever oil you happen to drip on your hand um every one of those drops what's fascinating is that one drop has approximately this is by the way a very low ball estimation 40 million trillion molecules in each drop of essential oils. So if you're trying to take notes, that's a four with 19 zeros after it, by the way, okay? Now, keeping in mind with easy math that we have approximately 100 trillion cells, one drop of essential oils would contain enough molecules to cover every cell in our body with over 400,000 molecules, okay? Now, considering it only takes one molecule of the right kind to open up a receptor site and communicate with the DNA to alter our cellular function, you can see why even one drop can have 
profound, <laughs> I'm seeing someone's typing on the screen, profound effects on the body and the brain and the emotions, okay? Are you catching this? So I wanna, I'm gonna try and bring this full circle and dig a little bit deeper. This, these are some big sciencey words, but I, I have fun with this when I understood it, okay? So every single oil has a different organic structure, organic compound, and they have all these different properties, but most of the ones, especially these ancient oils that we're gonna be talking about tonight, have these three properties in them. Um, phenol propanoids, which phenols are the ones that actually help to clean the receptor sites in your cells. So look at what's happening here. Let's say you use frankincense and you are, you know, you're using it maybe to just like help boost your mood, but then suddenly you're like, whoa, I rubbed it on my stomach and then my stomach started to feel a little bit better because guess what's happening? It has phenol propanoids and those can help clean the receptor sites of those, maybe any of your cells that have blocked receptors, okay? And then sesquiterpenes, have you ever heard of that? Sesquiterpenes, they actually, these are chemical constituents in most all of these essential oils. Some of them have really high, like cedarwood is really, really high in sesquiterpenes, so is frankincense. They have the ability to come into the cell and erase or delete all the bad information. So have you heard about free radicals and different things that are ways that our cells can kind of get jacked up from toxicity in our bodies, right? And then the monoterpenes is another chemical constituent that actually can help reprogram the cells to help establish it to its healthy state. So do you remember that story I told you in the very beginning about Connor? And when I first got introduced to the oils, and he had all these digestive issues and we'd tried so many different things, but we'd never tried essential oils. And I think when I was reading this in the book and as I was studying this, it was like this huge aha moment for me because I was like, that's why it helped so instantaneously for Connor because I was nursing him. I actually had acid reflux and I, that was like my birthing gift to him. Like, oh, here, sweet little child of mine. Now I'm gonna pass this gift right on to you. But he wasn't super toxic, right? He was nine months old. He'd been purely breastfed and, and yet he had this digestive issue. But as soon as we rubbed those oils onto his belly, it was in, in for my brain and understanding this, it was like taking the windshield wipers on his cells and just cleaning them off and allowing his cells to finally get to communicate the right way and say, oh, now we know what we're supposed to do. We've been trying to deliver this message and now the receptor sites are cleaned off and we can do what we were meant to do. You guys, I used that little sample that my friend gave me on Connor for just until the sample ran out. So for probably seven days or so, and then we never needed to use it again for that purpose. He never ever dealt with acid reflux as a baby after that. And um, it truly was miraculous, but I love understanding like God's amazing science that how he created us and he created us with, you know, so many similar properties to the plants, right? And that's how we, why we adapt and we understand so well. And so I don't know, I would love for those of you that are having fun on the, on the chat, but please, I just wanna invite you. And if you're on Facebook, I wanna invite you to chime in if you've ever had like an immediate instantaneous um, experience with the oils. And for some of us, maybe you have to keep using those oils for you know week after week, maybe even year after year. But for some of us, we've had situations where we used it a few times and then that issue just went away. So I'd invite you to share because it's really powerful to hear those experiences with one another. Okay, so now diving into a few more scriptures before we dive into all these different oils too. So um, Psalm 23, just write that one down. And it is, it's one of the most, most famous of all. The, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. And then I'm just going to jump ahead to verse five. It says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So I want to now just talk for a minute to about anointing. 
because this is something that is referenced also all throughout scripture and and is important you know our pastor at our church has said you know if god if god puts something in the bible once it's important it's it's he wants us to see it it's there for a reason but if you if there's something that shows up five, 10, 15, a hundred different times. God's like highlighting and circling it and saying, lean in. I really want you to get this. And there's so many references in the old Testament and the new Testament to anointing. So let's talk about what does that mean? Well, the, the actual translation of the word anoint in Hebrew is massage, which sounds a lot like our word massage, right? And so um, one of my, um, in my research, one of the things that I found that I loved is the description. It says anointing is the laying on of hands in a loving way. And so I want to take us to the, the passages where we talk about the sacred anointing oil. And this is Exodus. And if we were in person, by the way, I, I always pass out all these scriptures to everybody in the room so we can all be hearing from one another. I wish we could do that, but for the sake of time and the muting, unmuting, I'm, I'm just, you just get me reading these tonight. So Exodus 30 verses 22 to 25 is the Lord said to Moses, take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much that is 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon. I'm going to go to the screen so you can read along with me with this. Um, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel and a hin of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer, and it will be the sacred anointing oil. So what's fascinating here is if you look at this, um, you will see when I, again, when I would, was little and read this reference and then like growing up, I still didn't have any frame of reference to this, but you look at the amount of oil that's in this recipe and it's exorbitant. Do you see the translations I have on here? So myrrh, it was about 13, 13 pounds of myrrh, six and a half pounds of cinnamon, six and a half pounds of calamus, 13 pounds of cassia. And then look at this, six quarts of olive oil. Now I would have guessed when I first saw this recipe that it's the majority of it is olive oil with a little bit of essential oils, but it's actually quite the opposite. Do you see that? Do you see that it is mostly these really extravagant, costly, really powerful and potent by the way, and we're gonna talk about that, uh, essential oils and why might the olive oil be in there? Well, let's go back to the reference that I have up here on the screen right before this, Leviticus 8. And I'm going to read this. The Lord said to Moses, bring Aaron and his sons, their garments, the anointing oil, the bull for the sin offering, the two rams, and the basket containing bread made without yeast. Then Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and everything in it, and he consecrated them in this way. Then he sprinkled some of the oil on the altar seven times, anointing the altar and all the utensils in the basin with its stand to consecrate them. He poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him to consecrate him as well. So I put some stand-in pictures here so we can imagine what that tabernacle might have looked like and what was happening on the altar? What was being, what was happening there? Y'all can chime in on the chat. That was where the sacrifice was happening, right? And the utensils, now this picture on the bottom right shows some of these different utensils and what they might've looked like in the different scale. How amazing, for those of you that are now familiar with essential oils and specifically these essential oils, think of cinnamon and cassia happen to be some of the most antiseptic oils that exist in all of creation. They're so antimicrobial, antifungal, antiseptic, antibacterial, okay? Myrrh as well. And calamus is the only one on this list that I've never personally experienced. And then olive oil also has some of those properties. But so guess what? Like, I love that God in his, in his you know, in his law is also sure to say, 
I'm going to be so particular about what you need to do and the order in which you need to do this and the importance of anointing the altar and the utensils. What were they also doing? Was God protecting them? Yes, because it's killing all of the all of the bacteria and anything that might have made them come in contact with you know they're killing animals right so i think that it's just a beautiful description again of like how the fullness of god's protection for us and the things he asks of us and that there's always reasons behind it and i also in thinking about the fact that aaron was anointed with oil that these oils, if you've ever gotten cinnamon or cassia on your face, it has a burning, tingling sensation. And so I love that that olive oil is obviously in there to actually protect as a carrier oil against burning the skin or burning the nasal, you know, resins. So this uh, Psalm 133 is beautiful and and to just help us understand because again when I when I was younger and I thought about anointing and what that what that looked like um a lot of times I pictured just like a dab of oil on my forehead or maybe I've, I've been in churches where they would do like the sign of a cross with some olive oil but I want you to I want you to listen and just really imagine this scene okay this psalm 133 is just giving us painting a picture and referencing the the uh the anointing how good and pleasant it is when god's people live together in unity it is like precious oil poured on the head running down the beard running down aaron's beard down on the collar of his robe all the way down to the very bottom and um then the, the verse continues on, but there, if this is not a dab of oil, this is an outpouring, an overflowing of oil dripping all the way down to the very bottom of his robe and then puddling. And um, I just, I want to just pause there and hope that you guys on here, all of you beautiful women and men and people that are going to listen to this recording in the future can just um, hold on to that picture because I think often when we're asking for like when we're we're asking God for help or you know just reaching out and saying like God I need something um, we we underestimate how how generous he wants to be with us, how much he wants to lavish us with his goodness and with his anointing. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm just standing here waiting for you to ask and watch this. I have a whole alabaster jar of blessing I wanna pour out over you that it splashes all over you. And I think that that's something he wants all of us to receive and to remember. Um, he doesn't want to just give us a dab, you know, he says, I want you to have, I want you to be soaked in my presence. I, um, that was really meaningful and significant to me as I was digging in and researching this. And so I hope that you all <laughs> can, can embrace that. And whoever it is that I'm seeing your cool messages on the iPad, I love that I actually am getting to see some of the messages on the chat coming on my screen. <laughs> so I keep that in mind too, as you, we have the opportunity to pray for people and more people now, now more than ever before in my, the history of my life need prayer desperately and they need the touch of God. And it might just be one of you because you came to this class tonight and I'm giving you an assignment to look for the people around you, look for the people in your world, look for neighbors, um, look for people that need prayer. And if they're near enough by and you feel comfortable enough to take some of your oils, you don't have to dump the whole bottle of oil on them. God can actually turn our little dab of oil into a bucket full of, of anointing for, for anyone that we use them with. So, okay. Get out that frankincense and myrrh if you have them nearby. And um, I want to, I want to just journey. We're gonna, this is 
such a timely class. How many of you have a nativity set set up in your home somewhere? We have two. We have one from Madagascar that we got that was carved out of wood and my willow tree one that is probably my favorite. So Matthew 2 verses 1 to 12 is the story of when the Magi visit the Messiah. And remember the story. I want, I want to invite you all to go back and read this for yourself. It's the first 12 verses of the book of Matthew, and I'm not going to read all of them. But when they heard the king, they the, these magi, which we don't really know how many of them there were, but they went on their way and they saw, uh, and the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed on coming to the house. They saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So let's talk about, let's talk about frankincense. Whoever that is that put so wonderful on the screen, maybe some of someone that was using an iPad to type. I mean, it's really not the worst thing of all that could be on my screen, but I don't know if you can delete it. <laughs> Okay, so frankincense. This is a, an example of a frankincense tree. There's actually, uh, this is more of a close-up. In order to get the essential oils from, it's kind of an arduous process, and it's the same way with, with myrrh. There are, there are people that live out in, like for example, in Somaliland, in the most remote regions, and they actually then hike out into the wilderness and camp out for many days and nights in a row with these frankincense tree, and they score the tree ever so gently, and then this, ooh, it kind of bleeds. They actually call it frankincense tears, and it's like a sap that kind of oozes from the tree, and when that dries, they harvest those tears and then more will continue to ooze, just like almost if you were to pick a scab, right? And then it bleeds again. And so they, they keep harvesting it until it's, it stops kind of oozing. And then they take that, those tears and they dry them. And so this is a picture of some dried different types of frankincense resins. And then they steam distill those in order to get the essential oil. So it's a lot of different steps. Now, what was frankincense used for in ancient times? It was valued more than gold during ancient times. It symbolized divinity. It was used to anoint the newborn sons of kings and priests. Do you get that? Underline that one. It was used to anoint newborn sons of kings and priests. I just think it's so cool that, of course, it was given as one of the gifts to Jesus, who was the king of kings is the king of kings used in worship worn as perfume it was used in jewish rituals and it was uh, also known as an anointing oil and it was thought to assist one from transition of death and used oftentimes in embalming okay so how can we use it today <coughs> i'm laughing because there's so many ways we can use it and in the chat and on the facebook comments Please start typing in your favorite ways. When you think about frankincense, like what's your first gut kind of reaction of, of why you like using frankincense? Because I know it's gonna be all over the board. I love the phrase, when in doubt, get frankincense out because you can use it for so many things. I use frankincense as a cellular boost every day. I put two drops under my tongue, either in the morning or the evening. It's also in my supplements. I love adding it to my skincare routine. It's really great for all things skin related. So any skin blemish, um, when my son recently had a really bad dog bite that was healed so rapidly because of essential oils, we didn't use any, any other antibiotics. Um, we used, uh, the, the doctors actually coached me, to, they said, it looks like you have amazing tools, use those. And if, it, if it's showing any sign of infection, here's your prescription if you need it, right? And frankincense was one of the major ones that every single day we dripped on his wound and it healed so fast. It helps to promote cellular regeneration very quickly and it's good for boosting the immune system. 
Okay, Mer, and we're gonna clip through these qu pretty quickly. So this is where I'd love for you to be making sure you're commenting in the chats on all the different platforms and share some of your favorite. And if you have questions, be sure to chime in there too. So Mer, if for any of you that have Mer, it's a very sappy oil. It's even thicker and sappier than frankincense and it often gets a very gummy kind of residue on the top. And for that purpose, Sometimes it's actually hard to get out of the bottle. So one of my favorite things, my little hacks, is that I use a little dropper. I could actually put that into my myrrh bottle too. But it makes it so that I happen, to, I actually use my myrrh more often when I have this special dropper in it. And my mom, who's on here with us, she is the one that taught me that she calls it her liquid Band-Aid. And so this is another one that I used in the wound care mix with my son. And anytime my kids have wounds, really. And um, this time of the year in Ohio, the air is so dry and we get those little cracks on our hands and our knuckles from the dry air and dry skin. And I love using myrrh in that way. And myrrh is that one that was referenced first in the Bible. And it's probably mentioned more than any other essential oil all through the scripture is myrrh. It is extremely valuable. Um, I talked about how Joseph and Jacob and kind of how that story was all woven together. It was used as part of her beautification rituals for Esther, if you know the story of Esther. Uh, myrrh is one of those, uh, one of the recipe of the holy anointing oil. Um, pregnant mothers used it to prevent disease. And I wanna jump down here too. It says customarily was used on the umbilical cords of newborns to symbolically cut off generational sins and i think that is so powerful and i just want to say i actually um this was many years ago when i taught this class and there was a gal that came up at the very end for prayer and she had tears in her eyes and she said i wished i wish that when i was born someone in my family would have anointed my umbilical cord and would have anointed me as a baby with myrrh to help cut off some of that generational sin that seems to have followed from and i don't even remember what it was that her particular issue i don't know if she even shared it with me but i just said well it's not too late today let's get our myrrh out and pray over that that god will just break that and so that's a really good reminder for us like whether it's 30 years after you're born or 44 years or 64 or 84 you know like God gives us access to all this. And it was so cool. I actually, my mom's dad is a, uh, was the family practitioner in their small little town in Ohio. And it was so neat for me to see him model. Like he was a total allopathic doctor used, you know, we would call him up on the phone and he would say, here's a prescription for your ear, earache or whatever. But when we got introduced to essential oils, my grandpa really led the way of embracing and saying, this is God's original medicine. All of the prescriptions, all of the pharmaceuticals that we have are just copies and replicas of what God gave us. And they're bad copies. And that's why we end up dealing with side effects and have to you know, go down that path. And so he just really set a beautiful example of saying like, yeah, give me the real deal. Hey, if I can have access to the real lavender, I, let's try that first instead of the fake synthetic version of that that's in the sleeping medicine, right? And so anyhow, I, I just love that no matter where we are on our journey, that we're all on it, it's all a continuum. and that you can just pick up wherever you are today and say, what new thing can I take and apply to my life right where we're at? And don't get overwhelmed by it. We can just take baby steps in that direction. So I want you to chime in now for all the favorite ways that you use myrrh today. Like how do you use myrrh? This is also really great for gum health. And so our um, all of the doTERRA on guard um, mouthwashes and toothpaste and all that have myrrh in there too to help because it's really, really awesome at promoting healthy gums and also healthy skin. And it's really high in sesquiterpenes and monoterpenes and those big words that I shared earlier. 
And so they, do you know what's really cool about those things is that they can actually pass the blood brain barrier and have a really profound impact on our brain and on our mind. And so I have a lot of friends that when their parents or grandparents are kind of in the, those final stages of seasons of life, and needing a little bit of boost with their memory that some of the oils like myrrh and frankincense and cedarwood and some of these that are really high with sesquiterpenes have been really profoundly impacting on just like helping them feel present when they're together and remembering and bringing them in focus. So maybe that'll be a good little reminder. Now, how many of you out there are familiar with Dr. J. Vernon McGee? Did any of you ever listen to his syndicated radio show. I see some nodding heads. So this is this is actually from a recording that was back in 1983. And it was so beautiful. I listened to the whole thing, but I actually have a printout of of his show that from that day and I just want to read a little bit of the conclusion of what Dr. McGee shared on this day many many years ago and he said since gold, frankincense, and myrrh were highly prized by kings and emperors, these magi must have given Jesus three very expensive gifts. The gift of gold would have had great value to a young married couple whom God would soon send to Egypt. Besides their monetary values, frankincense and myrrh would have had medical and deodorizing benefits, great gifts for a couple with an infant. But this is what's so profound. The gifts also speak of Jesus Christ. Gold speaks of his birth. He is born a king. Frankincense speaks of the fragrance of his life. And myrrh speaks of his death. All of this is indicated in the gifts that were brought to him at his first coming. Because I didn't talk about this on the last slide, but myrrh as an embalming and that, that transition from life to death oil as well. So I, I was impacted and moved by that. Maybe that was meaningful for some of you out there. Now, how many of you have also been really moved by the stories of the anointing women in the New Testament? And there's so many references in all the Gospels. And when you really dig in and study them, you realize this is not just one account that's repeated in all of these different Gospels, but there are multiple references. So in other words, this happened more than once with women um, anointing Jesus with these really expensive treasured oils. And what was, what was the disciples response to that? They were a little bit indignant, weren't they? And because they knew the value, they knew like how precious and how um, <laughs> they thought it was a big waste, right? But Jesus, his response was, you're always, you know, like, you're not always going to have me. And what these women are doing is a beautiful, a beautiful act. And, um, and now I'm just trying to find my, my reference. Oh, here it is. Okay, I'm going to read the one that's Matthew 26, verses 6 to 12. Meanwhile, Jesus was at Bethany at the house of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. And while he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume. And, he, and she poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me here with you. She has poured this perfume on me to anoint and prepare my body for burial. Now, one of the things that I didn't say in the beginning is that when there are references in the Bible to when it says perfume and incense, remember, this is thousands of years ago. They did not have the scientific advancements in chemistry to know how to, in a lab, do a, create a replica of jasmine or valerian or spikenard or you know they so when they're talking about perfume it's the actual essence the true oils of the plant okay and so that's also why it was highly valued i mean when you now in many of these references it says aloes and so 
um, and some say spikenard. So the next oil I'm gonna we're gonna talk about is spikenard. Spikenard, if you see this, is a tiny five ml bottle. I don't remember the price of this, but it's about 65, 85 drops, I think. And so if you imagine a whole alabaster jar of this and how valuable in today's, I mean, that would be thousands of dollars in today's money. Imagine how much that would have been. They say it's like a year's worth of wages. So this is uh, another one of the references that I have on the screen, John 12, three. And Mary, this is Mary taking a pint of pure spikenard and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with a fragrance of perfume. So um, sandalwood and aloes, by the way, this is, um, this is another references. Let's talk about sandalwood, okay? I, I, um, I don't know if I have another screen of spikenard because it didn't have all of my ways to use spikenard there. But if I don't have that on a slide again, I just wanna let you know, this is an oil that has a very intense smell. And one of my friends recently told me because I didn't love the smell of it, but she said, if you think of blueberries, when you smell it and open it up the next time and think of blueberries, I smell blueberries, okay? And now I'm kind of fascinated and enamored by the smell of spikenard. It actually comes from the roots of the valerian plant. So if you look at this, and this is sourced from Nepal, high in the Himalayan mountains. So it's this really pretty plant, but it's actually from the roots. And when you know that, that's why you're like, oh yeah, it makes sense that it has that very earthy fragrance to it. Now in the Bible, any reference to aloes, that was the common lay term name for sandalwood. So what we refer to as sandalwood was um, the same as aloes, anytime you come across that in the Bible, okay? And there's a really powerful scripture reference. I have it up here on the screen. I'm going to let you write that one down. But this is um, when Jesus, right after he had been crucified, and they took his body, and they brought they brought him at nighttime, and they, they basically, they did their own version of embalming him with myrrh and aloe. So that's myrrh and sandalwood. Some references say 100 pounds each, some say 75 pounds. Imagine how much oil that was that they were using, 75 to 100 pounds of myrrh and sandalwood. All I know is like it cost $70 for this tiny little bottle. That's a lot of oils that they're using. And a lot of, again, I just I, this reference blows me away when I come across it, because again, it's circling back to that same powerful reminder I shared with all of you earlier, is that just his lavishness, like even in his death, you know, the lavishness of the amount of oils that he was wrapped with and strips of linen, and the lavishness of the women anointing him and Jesus saying, this isn't wasteful. Like this is a model, this, he was telling us, this is a model of what they're preparing me. And by the way, I'm going to pass on, I'm passing the torch and I wanna pass this blessing and this anointing onto all of you, right? So what can we use sandalwood for today? Um, there's so many documented history. Oh my goodness, as, as we're studying Egyptian history, it's all throughout these different scrolls and the um, hieroglyphics. They recorded everything in Egypt, which is why we know so much about ancient Egyptian history. And um, sandalwood had a wide variety of uses. And so please share in the comments what you use it for most. What's your favorite? Maybe if you have a really great story. One of the things I want to share is that it is often used in meditation. It's very calming and grounding. If you happen to have your sandalwood, put a drop on your hand. It's very, it's, it's one of those that's hard to drip out of the oil bottle. So you might like a little dropper top. And this is one that is also really helpful for people that are trying to overcome grief. So during this season, if you know anybody that's just dealing with 
grief, maybe the loss of a loved one. Um, I think we're actually all dealing with grief in different ways. But I, I, I feel like this is one, I just wanna underline that that's a really powerful use for sandalwood. Okay, gotta keep moving through here because we are, we're gonna get close to my time limit. <laughs> Okay, cedarwood is one of my favorite oils of all. I use cedarwood every single night. It's by my bedside. I use this to, it's so calming for me. It's my sleepy time oil. Anybody else have cedarwood as their favorite sleepy time oil? And this um, cedarwood, if you read 1 Kings 6.15, the entire inside from the floor to the ceiling was paneled with wood. And this is talking about King Solomon. And he used cedar and cypress for the floors. And the cedars of Lebanon are what are referred to in Bible times. And I love these little bullet points on here. It's a symbol of towering strength and purity. It was used in rituals for cleansing lepers of disease and cleansing priests of sin. And it's prized both for its strength and fragrance. And now the cedars of Lebanon got so overforested that they are absolutely protected. Nobody's allowed to touch them. There is a, is, and has anybody ever been there? My friend Betsy Holmes, that's where her husband's actually from, Lebanon. So they've, she's shared some really cool things about the cedars of Lebanon. But um, our cedar wood is actually sourced from the southern regions of the United States. And we know it's really great for um, getting rid of pests and protecting our clothing from insects, right? But it's also really good for promoting clear breathing and healthy respiratory function, which we all could be boosting right now. And this is one of the ones I mentioned earlier that's very high in sesquiterpene. So for anybody that wants to help like cross that blood brain barrier, um, maybe with someone that you love that's dealing with memory loss issues, this is a really great one to try. It's very grounding and helpful for the emotions and very good for massage. And you know, this is, this is one that's so affordable. It's only $13 for this bottle. And it's a good one just to carry around in your purse. And if you happen to be just needing your own little massage, just rubbing some on your neck, breathing it in. And that's what I always did every time I went to go visit my grandparents was I pulled an oil out and I just gave them a hand massage and just sat and talked with them. And it was such a special way to connect. So the next two oils are cassia and cinnamon. And for any of you that have these two oils, they are very similar smelling. Cassia is part of the cinnamon family, but it is, um, it, is, it is cheaper and easier to source cassia than cinnamon. So it's actually much more expensive for the cinnamon essential oil. So the cinnamon's in the five mil, this is in the 15 mil. And do you remember that both of these oils are in that holy anointing oil recipe? And you'll see that both of these oils, like I told you, be careful not to put this on your face. Don't put it on your hands and then like accidentally touch your neck or your, your face because it'll just get red and blotchy. And if that happens, just grab your fractionated coconut oil or some kind of a fatty oil and di help dilute it. But these are very warming, uplifting, great immune system boosters. I love putting a dab of cinnamon. I'm just gonna show you, I do this every day. I put a dab of cinnamon on my finger and I just touch it right to the tip of my tongue. And it's very hot, but it's really yummy. It tastes like I just sucked on some red hots. And now I'm gonna take a drink of water. <laughs> but it's so cool, like just giving me a boost. It's really good for healthy digestion and keeping your blood sugar regulated, okay? Do you guys know about that with cinnamon? It's in the Slim and Sassy blend. Cinnamon's also in the doTERRA On Guard blend. It's very popular. And, um, and it's in the On Guard because it, it's so awesome at killing my, microbacteria. And it's so cool that it kills the bad stuff, but it keeps all the good, healthy bacteria intact. And this time of the year, you guys, we want to be keeping our immune system so well boosted, but we, and we meet to keep our immune system boosted, we need our good bacteria doing their job. So we don't want to wipe out the good. We just want to wipe out the bad bacteria. And I also love that we source doTERRA cinnamon from, 
um, from Madagascar, which I used to live there. I lived there uh, back in the years 2000, 2001. I was a volunteer missionary and taught English. And that was my true first exposure with using plant-based medicine. It was so fascinating seeing the people even when they would go to the hospital, this little boy who lived right next door to us, he got a really bad burn and he came back home and the the wife shared with me the balm that they made and what they wrapped it in and that his skin when it was healing it did not look like a burn wound it was like his fresh new skin was growing and it was smooth not rigid or bumpy and i was just blown away by seeing the experience of you know things that they would go and pick out of our garden and make a make a poultice with and tea and and that really caught my attention. And I thought, here we are in like <laughs> the original Garden of Eden area. And, and yet what's so cool is that we have access to all of that right now. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us access to this, these gifts of the earth. And thank you, doTERRA, for, for sourcing the purest so that we can have so, so many amazing experiences. So, okay, I'm clipping past this to get over to Cyprus. Does, have any of you ever been in the Mediterranean region and seen these cypress trees grow all over? And that they look like they're so tall and narrow that they would just like snap and fall down, but they are so resilient. Surprisingly, they're like the strongest known wood. They, it's believed that that's actually the gopher wood that was referred to for building Noah's Ark. So that's something that you can do more of your own research. And, and uh, we went to the ARC experience in Kentucky last year and had a really cool time touring that with our kids. But this, one of the things that I want you to pay attention to when you look at this cedar, or the, sorry, the cypress tree is that everything is pointing up. Even when you go up to the tree and you look at the, pot, the, the evergreens, everything's pointing up as in just giving worship to our creator. And um, Cypress is really good for, again, drop in the comments what you like using Cypress for. And I didn't say that about cinnamon and cassia, but feel free to keep, if, if, if I didn't mention one of your favorite ways. Um, this is a really good for vasoconstrictor toning. It's really great at blood flow. I want to tell you, if you've never tried Cypress for this, it's an amazing one to use for circulation. So get some of that oil with the coconut oil, rub it in your hands or mix it with a lotion. Give your feet and your legs and your arms, give those, give those joints a really good massage with cypress. Anything that you need to help um, with the blood flow is a beautiful oil to use for that. Okay. Huh. Are you guys ready? We're, we're, we're getting close. We're winding down and I hope you all are having fun with me. Thank you for bearing with me. I see that we've, we're holding strong with our 164 participants on here still. doTERRA just recently unveiled these ancient oils and it's this beautiful set of oils. You can, it's still available on doTERRA. You can order this and it comes with frankincense and myrrh along with four oils we've never ever had access to before. And so this is my first time to ever teach on these four. And I found these really great images um, that I wanted to put on here because if you want, you can just take a screenshot to help you learn and understand how to use Cystus, for example. And I put some of the different um, references to scripture on here. Cystus is actually also known as the Rose of Sharon or Rock Rose in this picture up in the top right. Um, is what it looks like, okay? So the current Rose of Sharon now refers to something different, but back in Bible times, what was Rock Rose or Rose of Sharon would have been this plant, most likely. And so this is, this is right here. Does anybody have these oils out like I do? Um, I'm still, I'm just getting to know them and I'm trying to figure out which ones are my favorite. So please type in here if you've had some cool experiences. I love that it says apply over the bridge of the nose when congested. Um, it says that you can put this in your moisturizer. It said this is a really good one for prayer and meditation and also a good one to add as a st sinus steamer. 
for anybody that's dealing with like, I probably could use a sign steamer right now. I've gotten teared up so many times in this, I'm starting to sound congested. <laughs> so um, I think this, I'm gonna take the advice of rubbing this on my chest and um, breathing this in. It smells really lovely and it says to calm the nerves. So anytime you're getting ready to teach a class or something, maybe this, is a, this could be a new one for you to start using. Okay, galbanum. This is this oil right here. And um, this is referenced in Exodus. If you look at the reference, it's kind of covered up by my, my videos that I'm seeing of you guys. But um, the, the Lord said to Moses, and this is, this is when he's instructing Moses on what to get. And galbanum is one of the oils and one of the, actually it was a resin version of this. And this was used to help consecrate the tabernacle. So the ways that we can use it today, it said diffuse with peppermint to clear the airways, diffuse with Siberian fir, frankincense, and lavender. You can also, it seems like so many of these that you can use in your skin care routine. Now, these are very compliant slides. And so some of our favorite ways to use them might not show up on my slideshow, but that's where I'd love for you guys to be able to type in and, and share kind of the real deal ways that you've been using. Um, this is a great wound care healing. So this is another good one for as your skin might crack and bleed <laughs> if you live in this region of the world this time of the year. And then it says also for menstrual cycle. I think that's really cool to apply right to your abdomen and apply to your feet and legs prior to a long run. Well, that's not for me. I haven't done any long runs lately, but maybe there's some of you out there that are doing some good exercising long runs. Okay, the next oil is hyssop. And there's some beautiful references to hyssop in the Bible. One of them I have over here, John 19, is when Jesus was taking his, his last words on the cross. And he said, I'm thirsty. And they handed up to him, um, a sponge that was soaked in wine vinegar and they put it on the end of a hyssop branch and handed it up to him and they lifted it to his lips and after that he said it is finished so the hyssop branch was used then the hyssop um on psalm 51 7 said cleanse me with hyssop and i will be clean wash me and i will be whiter than snow so there's a lot of really beautiful references this one has a special lid a special cap which makes me think that it probably is high in um, some of the same properties that might be in birch in wintergreen, which is also why the special cap for deep blue, because it has those um, nice analgesic kind of like the same kind of properties as aspirin, which is that methyl salicylate. It took me a lot of practice to learn how to say some of these words, by the way. <laughs> so, um, this is the last one of these new oils that is in here. And this is myrtle. And myrtle, I actually learned about this year because in our study that we're doing with our homeschool, we're actually learning about the ancient biblical feasts and celebrating many of them because of all the beautiful symbolism that's in there. And so in this fall, we actually built a Sukkot booth in our backyard it didn't stand up. It didn't stand up very long. The wind blew it down after a few days. But one of the um, myrtle was one of the symbols that is uh, for that um, biblical feast, and it's it's a sign of strength for the Jewish people. So you can look at my references over there: Isaiah forty-one, Isaiah fifty-five, and Nehemiah eight. And there's a lot of myrtle references, and I it smells. It says diffuse with rosemary down here. And it's interesting because this almost reminds me of like kind of a more of a leafy rosemary kind of a smell. But it says for healthy thyroid. Ooh, very cool. I have a thyroid blend that I put on my thyroid every day. And I'm going to add a few drops of this to that. Um, it says if you're congested, a lot of these, are you seeing so many of these say for, for respiratory issues? Hello, who? is needing respiratory support right now all over the world. So these oils are amazing. And I bet there's so many more awesome uses that were not even listed on these very compliant slides. 
but um, many of them also mentioned to be able to use them into a bath. Okay, you guys, this is um, a special edition. I just, I just put this together today. As I was praying and preparing for this class, I personally was just feeling um, like there's so many people as we're entering into Christmas season. I know this is typically a really joyful time of the year, but I know for many people, this is, um, it stirs up a lot of grief, maybe because you're not getting to spend Christmas with people that you're missing from years past that have since passed on. Um, for me personally, there's grief during the season because this Christmas is just feeling and looking different than other seasons. And it's hard, you know? And I think that there are a lot of people wrestling with a lot of big emotions. And so I, in my research and my study, this book and some of the other books on emotions, I actually put together some of these special diffuser blends. So if you want to screenshot that and try some of them, I would love to hear feedback on um, if any of these make, a, make an impact on you. And all of these different blends use some of the different oils that we just talked about here tonight. So I'll give one more second if you want to snap that. If you're on, <laughs> I don't know how to coach you on all your different devices, how to take screenshots. But if you want this and didn't get it, reach out to a friend, phone a friend. <laughs> so these are, these are some of my favorite books that I've referenced many times in my study on this. Um, if this is a topic that interests you, I encourage you to do your own deep dive, maybe order some of these books. You can order them wherever you like to, to order your books online and um, seek out classes from other friends. If whomever invited you to this class, please circle back from with them. If you don't have oils yet and you wanna get some of these beautiful healing oils, circle back to whomever shared this video with you or invited you to watch this. Um, or you can always reach out to me and I can help direct you. And for those of you that feel like you would love to teach this class or even just have access to this for your own personal study, you can go to our team website, which is teamhealthyessentials.com. And if you scroll down on the main homepage, this is a, uh, you get all of it, all of my PowerPoint and the class notes and the leader's notes and the scripture references and all my research for 10 bucks. I put it in there in a bundle and I'm always updating and adding to that. So this is our last slide. So you can put your pen down and I just want you to um, put your, be, be in a posture of receiving this and maybe grab an oil that you, if, if you have an oil that's handy, um, because what I'd love to do as we wrap this up is I just want to wrap us up in prayer again. And I want to I want to pray over you. And, and one of the things I want to remind you, and this is, I'm just going to coach you. Maybe, maybe nobody has ever coached you on this before. Do you know, we, <laughs> these essential oils are powerful and effective. And we know that using oils alone can be really impacting. And I'm here to tell you that prayer is also powerful. And maybe there's some of you out there that, that haven't prayed recently, or maybe you've never prayed before. And I want to, I want to teach you how easy it is to pray. Really, all you have to do is just call on the name of Jesus. You can say, Jesus, come. Jesus, help. You can just open up your mouth and just talk. And he's standing by. And it is very powerful to pray for other people. Now, what I want to tell you is that the combination of oils and prayer is truly powerful indeed. You know, God gave us both these tools and he, he put many times in scripture to anoint with oils and pray and um, coaches us to do that. And so what I want to remind all of you that have oils to use is when you are waking up in the morning and you're putting oils on, maybe when you're before bed and you're putting some oils on, I want you to stop 
in the middle of that and be reminded of whatever reason you're putting oils for. Maybe it's on a grandchild or a child that you're oiling up the bottoms of their feet or putting something on their spine. I want you to add prayer to that intention. You know, whatever intention you're using that oil, pray over that. Before you go to bed tonight, if you're using cedarwood like I do to help you fall asleep, just do a simple prayer and just say, Jesus, help me fall asleep peacefully tonight. Help my mind chatter to just turn off. Just something simple like that. Um, if you, if someone that you love is sick and you're putting oils on them, just pray for healing. So let's read this um, James 5 together. Is anyone among you in trouble? I actually cannot see my whole screen. So I'm going to have to pull it over here because these vid videos are blocking it. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And a prayer offered in faith will make a sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And by the way, the prayer of a sinner is powerful and effective. And, um, and wherever you are at tonight, you know, wherever on this globe where you're at physically and wherever you are at emotionally and spiritually, like, Jesus sees you and loves you and wants healing for you. And um, I, I want, I, I put this revelation passage down here too, because you know how I started in the beginning? Well, I thought it would only be fitting that we end at the end, which is the very last chapter with the very last book of the Bible. Revelations 22 verses one to three says the angel showed me, this is John's revelation of heaven. The angel showed me the river of the water of life. It was as clear as crystal and it flowed from the throne of God and the lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit. Its fruit was ripe every month and the leaves of the tree bring healing to the nations. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the lamb will be in the city. God's servants will serve him. So do you remember that Ezekiel verse and how that was mirrored right here at the very end? So let's pray. I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to stop my screen share so I can see all of you. And uh, I just, there. I love that. Okay. I can see everybody again, see all this amazing conversation happening, <laughs> happening over here. Hopefully there's some good combo happening on the, on the Facebook too. But um, yeah, do you all have an oil that you can use right now to, to just anoint yourself with, or just breathe in? I'm at the very bottom. This is my frankincense and it's like at the very end, I'm getting like a few little dabs on my hands. So let's breathe that in. If you want, you can rub that on your forehead. It's also really great. I'm getting more of a different oil because I was gone. Um, I want to coach you to rub it on the back of your neck for any emotional thing ever. The best way I coach my kids on this from the time they were little is rub it in your hands, rub it on your neck, on your brainstem, breathe it in. You're getting all of that impact right into your head and your heart, your emotions, your memories, right? Okay, and just, I invite you to, um, just to close your eyes and bow your head or you can open your hands and just receive this. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your gifts. We thank you for your generosity, for your abundance. And I, I pray that we can have the eyes to see you moving and stirring among us. There's so many, um, there's so many divisive, hard things going on in the world stirring around us right now. But Lord, you hold, uh, you hold the earth and you hold us 
if we want to be held by you. And I just pray that for everyone that hears this message, that they can feel your presence, feel your embrace. And Jesus, I pray that we can just receive your anointing touch. I'm just picturing everyone standing here with a giant alabaster jar, Lord, that you're pouring out over us of your, um, of your protection, of your joy, of your peace. And I just pray that we can receive that. I pray for healing. I pray for anybody out there listening to this that's just struggling, maybe with grief, maybe with anxiety or fear or trauma or just missing people. I pray that you will meet every one of us right where we're at, Lord. And if anybody's dealing with a physical ailment, just touch them in Jesus' name. We ask all this in your name, Jesus. And together we say, amen. <laughs> Oh, thank you for bearing with me. This class was probably the, the longest version of this class I've taught online. But we had a lot of ground to cover, didn't we? So um, I appreciate you all. I, I pray that you have an amazing season. And I hope that many, many of you get to share the joy of these oils with the people in your life. So if, um, if anybody, if you all want to, this is one of, one of my favorite ways to, to wrap up the class is everybody unmute and we can say goodbye together. Goodbye. <laughs> bye. 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 Thank you so bye. much. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. God bless you all. Bye. Jesus loves y'all. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I love your heart, sweetie. You are in my heart. Thank you. Beautiful class, Carrie. Merry Christmas. Very beautiful class. Thank you, Carrie. I'm